Shalom, I'm a Messianic Rabbi, Zeph Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. And today I'm going to be talking to you about your faith is accounted to you for righteousness. Imunah in Hebrew. All of us have fallen short of the glory, but through him we become righteous. Romans chapter 4 verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? Verse 2. For if Abraham was justified by works... He has something to boast about, but not before God. Verse 3, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It doesn't say Abraham was righteous. It says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. When the scripture says it's speaking about the Old Testament, because everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. And it's speaking about Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, referring to Abraham, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So when it says, as the scripture says, or when it's talking about the scriptures, it's talking about the Old Testament. Because it's one book from Genesis to Revelation, and everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. Let's continue, Romans chapter 4, verse 4. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as a debt. Verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Amazing Bible verse. I want you to just think about how amazing this Bible passage is. The world doesn't know anything about this. Those who don't know Yeshua, don't, those who do not believe that he died on the tree and the cross for our sins, that he rose on the third day, and by his blood you have full redemption of sins and eternal life. They don't know this. They don't understand this. You cannot understand this without the Ruach HaKodesh, without the Holy Spirit. Because if they understood this, they would believe in Yeshua. This is unbelievable. You believe in Yeshua, you believe in Jesus, and sin is taken out of your account, and righteousness is put in. That's what it means. It's accounted for righteousness. Most people, if you ask them, what do you have to do to get to heaven? Even here in Israel, most people, if you ask them, what do you have to do to get to heaven? Their answer will be, be a good person, do good works. And some will even say it like this, do more good than bad. And then hopefully in the end of your life, you'll have more good in your account than bad. And then you get to go to heaven. Well, the only problem with that is it's not biblical and it's not scriptural because God's standard is not good. I'm going to say it again. God's standard is not good. God's standard is perfect. So if God's standard is perfect, how can you get to heaven? Let's turn the Bible to the book of Yaakov, the book of James, chapter 2, verse 10. And the person who keeps every law of God but makes one little slip is just as guilty as the person who has broken every law there is. So the question is, how many of us have made one little slip? Well, the answer is clear. All of us have fallen short of the glory, but through him, we become righteous. We cannot become righteous. We cannot meet God's standard, but only through Jesus, only through Yeshua. So the idea that the world says, be good more than you do bad, is not what the Bible teaches, because God's standard is not good. God's standard is perfect. So once again, if God's standard is perfect, and none of us are perfect, how do we get to heaven? Well, the answer is very simple. We believe in the perfect one, Jesus, Yeshua, God, hallelujah. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. Yeshua is the word. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let's go back to Romans chapter 4, verse 3, because this is really the key of the message. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So the question is, what is righteousness? So if I told you, for example, Brother Chaim here in Israel is a righteous person, I've known him for 20 years, what would you think in the natural? You would think he lives a righteous life. You would think if he's a righteous person, he does righteous things. You may think he's not perfect, but to the best of his ability, he lives a righteous life. That's what you would probably think. And you would be right, it's a correct assumption, but it's not the only assumption. And let me just say it this way so we can think a little bit about grace and works. 
is Brother Haim righteous because he does righteous things, or does he do righteous things because he's righteous? Is he righteous in God's sight, in God's eyes, because he does righteous things? And the word for righteousness in Hebrew, the root word of righteousness is the word right in Hebrew, nachon. The word in Hebrew, nachon, the word in Hebrew, tzodek, doing the right thing. So is he right with God because he does right things? Or does he do right things because God, by grace, made him right with God? Your understanding about grace changes everything in life. And I remember ministering one time to a pastor in London and we're sitting down and I asked him a question. I said, do you believe that you have to fight for everything you have now? And he said, absolutely. And he's a good man. He's, you know, he's, he's a pastor. He's, he's a good person. But he said, yes, I believe I had to fight. And I said, well, he, the difference is you believe you had to fight for everything. I believe it was given to me by grace from God. Everything that I have is about grace. It's been given to me. I can't do anything on my own. And he looked at me and he said, Zev, I never thought about it that way. And two weeks later, I was invited to preach in his congregation. And he preached that same night in the congregation. He preached this message. Praise Yeshua. We give him all the glory. The way you understand grace will affect the way you see God, and the way you relate to God, the way you minister. It affects the way you see others. It affects the way you relate to others. And mainly, it'll affect the way you see yourself. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God. Righteousness is right standing with God. And that really is the easiest definition of defining what righteousness is. Right standing with God. Can a righteous man do an unrighteous deed? We read that in the scripture before. One slip and it's accounted to you as unrighteous, but through him we become righteous. All of us have fallen short of the glory, but through him we become righteous. You can only have right standing with God through Jesus, through Yeshua. Now, after we believe, when he makes us righteous, then we do good deeds, but those good deeds don't get us to heaven. That's the fruit of the Spirit. When you believe in Yeshua and you're in right standing with God, we begin to do good deeds, but those good deeds are not what gets us to heaven. Yeshua, Jesus, enables us to do those good deeds. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. Now, can an unrighteous person do a righteous deed? Perfect example, right here in Israel, we have Orthodox Jews that are not saved. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in Yeshua, but they do a lot of righteous deeds. They help people, but they don't believe in Yeshua. Those righteous deeds cannot get them to heaven. Those righteous deeds cannot put them in right standing with God. That's why the Bible is clear. You cannot do anything to get to heaven. All of us have fallen short of the glory, but only through him we become righteous. Only if you believe that Yeshua, Jesus, died on the tree on the cross for your sins, he rose on the third day, and by his blood, if you repent and believe, you are saved. You become righteous through him. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. But does the righteous deed that the unrighteous person does make him righteous? The answer is no. Does the unrighteous deed that the righteous man does, does that make him unrighteous? No, because I'm righteous by my position, not by my performance. I'm going to say it again. I'm righteous because of my position, not because of my performance. Now, it's wrong to do those things. And a believer will suffer consequences for doing something like that. The Bible's clear on that. You can even go down the road where you can actually destroy your life if you allow anger to continue to control your life and you have lack of forgiveness. But you're put with right standing with God by the blood of Yeshua, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And here's another point. Did Abraham earn it? Well, the Bible answers that. Let's go back to Romans chapter 4, verse 2. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Romans 4, verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Verse 4. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as a debt. And this word accounted in Hebrew is the word which means in English to keep record. 
of credits and debit. It's accounting. That's where we get the word in English and in Hebrew, the accountant. That's what it means. So it means keeping records of debits and credits. Here's what it means. Now, to him who works, it's not counted as grace, but it's counted as a debt. Now, here's what it means. It doesn't mean that it's bad for you to do good works. That's not what it means. Because we're saved to good works. We're saved and then we do good works. Talks about this in the book of Ephesians. We're not saved by good works, but we're saved and then we do good works. Big difference. So it doesn't mean that we should not do good works and it's counted against us. That's not what it means. What it's saying is if Abraham would have done good works, that would mean that God would owe him. If someone came to your house and did a, you know, did a painting job or landscaping or something, after they finished the job, you would owe them for what they did. It's a debt to you. You owe them for what they did. So what it's saying here, God doesn't didn't owe Abraham anything. And God doesn't owe anyone. Simple words, but yet such a deep message. What it means is there is nothing anybody can do, no good work, nothing you can do to earn to be in right standing with God. Only the blood of Jesus, the blood of Yeshua. Look at Isaiah 64, verse 6. All our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Notice the word righteousnesses, plural. All of them are like filthy rags. All our individual acts of righteousness are like filthy rags. All of us have sin in our account, but Yeshua has righteousness in his account. God took the righteousness out of his own son's account, and Yeshua Jesus made us righteous. That's why the Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing, God took the one who had no sin and made him sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. This is really amazing. Jesus, Yeshua, shed his blood, and the blood of Yeshua erased our sins. Hallelujah. In Hebrew, And not only our sins, but the blood of Yeshua erased the sins of the whole world. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So what did Abraham have to do to get it? He had to believe. Let's have a look at John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then they said to him, what shall we do? We may work the works of God. John chapter 6, verse 29. Yeshua, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. This is the only thing you need to do. You have to believe. It has to be in your heart, but live in your heart, not just your head. Praise Yeshua for his grace, for the blood that he shed for us in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. I pray this teaching has blessed you as it has blessed me over the years. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Work the harvest together. Bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Through her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And the word for salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua, Jesus, her Yeshua, like a blazing torch. And we know that he's coming back with fire in his eyes, ish by nine, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, Ali Yehuda, to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Aryeh Yehuda, the line of the tribe of Judah, the great I am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. All of us have fallen short of the glory, but through him we become righteous. Hallelujah.